probably because it's running out of batteries. Here's our opening text that I want us to think about. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Anyone who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Last week, we took a look at um, redeeming the time from the perspective of busyness and how we can be so busy busy, our busyness becomes a distraction from the Lord. Today, I want to take a look at the other side of that equation, busyness, and take a look at the other side, procrastination. One side, man, we're so busy, we're so active, we're so involved, we're running a thousand miles, you know, an hour and some of those things are needful things, but Jesus doesn't take first place and we get distracted. And today is the other side of that equation where we're just idle. And what does the Bible have to say about idleness or procrastination? Proverbs 6 Verses 7 through 11 is a verse that um, uh, many of us have, have, have often heard. Uh, Proverbs 6 says, go to the ant, O sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you lie there, O oh sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. What is this verse? saying to us when we think about procrastination and idleness. You sit there too long without doing anything and just letting time slip by, you yeah. are wasting away. You are not achieving what you were put on earth and created to do because you lazy. It's a perfect it's a perfect example. And if, if you look in Proverbs, Proverbs has a lot to say about the sluggard or the slothful. A lot to say. And man, I tell you what, <laughs> when I was going through this, I, I, I got convicted in some areas like, man. So we want to talk about procrastination, which is the opposite of being busy. Procrastination, it, it's a universal problem. Um, most of us know what it is that we need to do. James said, if you know what you need to do and you don't do it, to you that's sin. Most of us, we know what we need to do. We, we, we just put it off. I'll do it later. A little folding of the hands. I'll get to it. The problem with procrastination is not just that there's some things that you put off, it's that it can become a way of life, procrastination. Here's a quote. So here's my question before I get to this quote. So the question is, is procrastination a sin? Is procrastination a sin? Because generally, again, we don't think about time through that kind of lens. Busyness can be a sin because it distracts me from the Lord. It prevents me from putting God first. If I'm busy with the wrong things, right? And is procrastination a sin? Again, coming back to James 4.17, James says, anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. James says that when, we're, when there's 
and, and the good is a qualifier, right? And I don't want to, I don't want to kind of delve down into that. Um, but let's just keep it from the sense of there are all kinds of things that you and I know that we ought to be doing. A lot of good that we know we ought to be doing, and we don't do it for a lot of different reasons. We're going to talk about that. James says that thing becomes a sin. Sorry, my, my, my thing is acting up. It's going backwards and forwards. Okay. So here's a quote I found. You know, I, 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 love, I, love, I love quotes. Um, I have no idea who Gloria of Pitzer is, but I love this quote. It says, procrastination is my sin. It brings me naught but sorrow. I know that I should stop it. In fact, I will tomorrow. I thought that was a good quote. <laughs> the whole idea of procrastination is putting something off that you can do today. I know it's wrong. I'll stop it. Not today. I'll get to it tomorrow. So, so, so the Bible has a lot to say to us about procrastination. It, it, procrastination, it's a mindset. It's the condition of the mind that says, I'll do it tomorrow or I just don't feel like it right now. And when you and I procrastinate, what happens? We, we, we put off something important in exchange for doing something else. And remember, we get 24 hours a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, the whole chronos ideal. And God wants to encourage us to make the most of those opportunities. And procrastination says, I'm not going to take advantage of the opportunity in this moment. I'm going to exchange some good that I know I ought to be doing for some idleness or for something else. We put off something important in exchange for doing something else even if the doing something else is nothing at all, just laying around. If you choose to do something, I'm, I'm sorry, if you choose to do nothing, you're doing something, right? Which is idleness, which is laziness. And that's a hard concept because when I was, when I was putting all this stuff together, you know, you think about often how busy and hectic and strained we are with time. And is that saying that, man, taking some time on a Saturday or something and spending a couple of hours, you know, or an hour, two hours on the couch, just trying to rest up, is that wrong? No, I don't think it's wrong. And we're going to come to understand um, what procrastination really is and really isn't. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to take a look to come to understand what are the causes of procrastination? What are the causes? of a mindset that says, I know I ought to do it, but I'm just not gonna do it now. I'm gonna put it off till tomorrow. How, how, how many of us would admit that in some areas of our lives, we struggle with procrastination? Yeah, I'm one of them in some areas. Yeah, you know, and, and particularly when it comes to work, right? You said, man, I. I work better under the timeline. I, I, I just seem to get more focused, man. When the timeline, right? You convince yourself. Oh, I knew it's I know it's due now. I know it's due on this date, but I do so much better when I'm up against it. That's how we rationalize it. So what we want to do today is we want to understand um the causes of procrastination, what's the cost of procrastination, and then what's the cure for procrastination? What are its causes? What does it cost us? And then how do we correct it? Because again, there's stuff God has for us. There's a, there's, there's, there's a Kairos moment in 2023 
And there are things that we should be putting our hands to, but procrastination will rob us of those opportunities. So let's talk about the causes of procrastination. We're gonna go through these relatively quickly. The first cause of procrastination is indecision. So think about this. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and you, you, you and your peeps out there, y'all talking, you, you, you got the menus there and, and, and then a waiter comes and y'all been there for, for 20 minutes and you ain't even looked at the menus to decide what it is you want. You send the waiter away. You say, hey, come, 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 come back again. Because you couldn't make up your mind because you weren't looking at the menus. Indecision. Indecision causes you and I to postpone taking action. It causes us not to do the good that God wants us to do. Indecision. We can't make up our minds. We can't choose. We postpone the thing that we know we ought to do. James 1.5 gives us this instruction. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you gotta believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. That person who doubts, that doesn't believe, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. They can't decide. They're indecisive. One of the causes of procrastination is indecisiveness, and indecisiveness as a result of not asking God for the right direction, not seeking God for wisdom and allowing him to influence and to guide our direction and our steps. And here's where I think it becomes really challenging because on the big issues, most of us readily seek God's wisdom on the big issues. It's the everyday, I, you know, um, um, I think of the verse that says, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the cumulative effect of the areas that we think aren't big and aren't major that we don't seek God's wisdom in, that we procrastinate and we delay in taking action. The cumulative effect of all those areas are just as detrimental as if we didn't seek God on the major issues. When you and I try to make decisions and our, and our minds is, is full of doubt and confusion, it's usually a good indication that we need to spend more time with the Lord to help him to influence our decision-making. One of the causes of procrastination is indecision and indecision because we're clouded. We haven't asked God for wisdom. There's 30,000 things that are coming at us and we don't stop to wait before the Lord. We don't stop to seek his wisdom, to get his clarity. And so we become double-minded. We become unstable. We become indecisive. The other cause of procrastination is perfectionism. How many here would, would, would admit and own up to being a perfectionist? I do. I got a standard. Yeah, yeah. No, no, listen, listen. No, 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 notice, notice, no, no, notice, right. Ray said, yeah, yeah, I'm a perfectionist. I got a standard. I, I own it, but I'm a rationalizer. Sure, most of us are perfectionists, right? We want to... There, there, there's things we want to do, we, we want to do it right, but there are times when our desire for perfection causes us to delay. If we wait for things to be perfect, well, 
we're gonna be waiting a long, long time. And we're probably never gonna do what God's calling us to do because the situations and the circumstances aren't exactly right. Here's a verse from Ecclesiastics. Um, and it's not a King James um, um, translation. Um, it says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. I think the King James talks about the the, the King James talks about the farmer um, who 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 if you wait for the wind to stop blowing, you'll never sow. If we wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. I know God is calling me to do this. I know in this moment, in this window of opportunity, I should be doing that, but I'm waiting for this to happen and that to happen and for this to be perfect and for that to be right and for this to line up. And then the, the, the result is we end up delaying the action that we know we ought to take because we're waiting for the perfect conditions. Oftentimes the conditions, when God calls us to do something, the conditions are never going to be perfect, but he wants us to take that first step of faith. Remember when, when Moses told Israel, when they were running from Pharaoh, they came out, they came out of Egypt and they're, 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 they're moving um, towards the promised land and Pharaoh sends his army and the chariots and they're chasing down Israel and they're up against the mountain on one side and they're up against the sea on the other. That wasn't a perfect condition, right? But Moses didn't wait for the perfect conditions. Moses said, God, what am I supposed to do? God said, stretch out your rod, man. God didn't say part to see Moses. He just said, Moses, I gave you a rod. That rod's got some power, man. That rod represents our faith. Stretch out your faith. You put your faith into action, stuff will move. Oftentimes we're waiting for stuff to move before we exercise faith to be obedient to what God calls us to do. We can't wait for perfect conditions. That's a cause of procrastination. Another cause of procrastination, indecision, perfectionism, waiting for perfect conditions or waiting till I can do it perfectly right. The other one is fear. Fear. When, 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 when I'm afraid, I put things off. We don't go to the doctor or we don't go to the dentist or we don't share our faith with um, other believers because of fear. We won't launch out and start that thing God told us to start because of fear. We're afraid. We're intimidated. So because we're afraid, because we're intimidated, we don't do the thing God tells us to do. Proverbs 29, 25 says this, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Fear of failure, fear of man, will cause us to put off the good we know we ought to do. Fear of man, fear of failure paralyzes us and it keeps us from accomplishing the thing that God has called you and I to do. Ask yourself this question. What am I afraid of? Am I trusting God or am I letting fear drive me? What is it that I'm not doing that I know God has called me to do, but I don't do it because I'm uh, afraid? Maybe I'm afraid of rejection, afraid of failure, afraid of man. Man, I don't share my faith. I don't witness because I'm afraid, even though he said, Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Even though he said that we're ambassadors for Christ, that he's given us the message of reconciliation. And there are multiple opportunities that are presented to us 
to share the gospel. And oftentimes fear will cause us to delay. Fourth thing that is a cause of procrastination. We got indecision, can't make up my mind, delaying making a choice. I'm double-minded, I can't decide. Perfectionism, I'm waiting for the perfect conditions or I'm waiting until I can do it perfectly right. Fear of man, failure, rejection. And then the last one is just good old fashioned sheer laziness. You know, the American culture, we're, we're, we're a nation of couch potatoes, right? We, we thrive on pleasure and easiness. I found this in some research. One of the most popular words in American advertising is the word easy. That's one of the most popular words in marketing and advertising is easy because we're Americans. We don't want to work for nothing. If it's too hard, if it's too complicated, no, it's easy. If it's easy, we like it. If it's hard, we don't like it. I, I just developed a national health product and we call it the easy button. <laughs> when, when I looked at the research, I was like, yeah. <laughs> we call it the DPC easy button because we're American. We like easy, right? It's in our culture. Look what, the, look, what, look what Proverbs says. And Proverbs has tons of verses that speak to this ideal of laziness, or as Proverbs calls it, the sluggard or slothful. It says a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. A lazy person is as bad as somebody that destroys things. They're trying to understand what causes us to put off till tomorrow the stuff we know we need to do today. And there are multiple causes. There's more than the four that were listed here. We, we've identified a few. Some of, it, some of it's indecision. Some of it's perfectionism. Some of it's fear. And some of it is just being downright lazy. One of the verses in Proverbs talks about the slothful man or the lazy man, he won't roast his meat. He'll hunt it, he'll kill it, but he won't roast it. He'll just lay there in his bed while his meat goes bad. We don't like to put in the effort. Here's a question for you to think about. What of significance has ever been accomplished that did not require hard work and diligence. Many of you have multiple degrees. Many of you have gone back to school late in life to acquire degrees, right? Those things required effort. It required work, required diligence. God, listen to me. God has called you and I, each of us, as a collective community and individually to accomplish things in our life. Not just the things that advance and promote our lives and lead to success in our lives, but he's called us to accomplish things in our life for his glory and the building of his kingdom. What keeps us from that is laziness. In other words, unwilling to do the hard work that's required. It's another way to look at laziness, unwilling to do the hard work that is required. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands, right? And he says, soon poverty will come upon you. An unwillingness to do 
the hard work that's required. So let me go back here. So the causes of procrastination we just can't be decisive because we're double-minded. We, we, we haven't sought God for his wisdom on how to make the most of that opportunity, how to take advantage of the day that's in front of us. Perfection is waiting for the right conditions, the right circumstances, the right, the right scenarios. Fear of failure, rejection, outcomes, right? Fear of man, and then laziness. In other words, an, un, an unwillingness to do the hard work that's involved in a given task. Those are the causes of procrastination. Let's talk about what is the cost of procrastination? What does it cost us? Sorry for that. My, my clicker is all jacked up. So what's the cost of procrastination? What does it cost us to have a mindset, to have an attitude that just keeps putting the stuff off tomorrow that we know that we ought to do today? What's the cost of procrastination? One, it causes problems. The, 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 there, there, there are a couple of misconceptions about procrastination that it becomes easy for us to buy into. And part of that misconception is it's, it's easier to avoid this than to face it. So if, if I just avoid it, if I just don't get involved in it, and I just don't face it, if I just ignore it, it'll go away. The other one is, it will be easier to handle tomorrow. Sometimes that may be true, right? Sometimes that may be true. But whatever we decide from the standpoint of, oh, I'm just going to avoid it, it's easier to just not confront it, or I'm just going to wait till tomorrow. Whatever that thing, that choice that drives it ultimately there's a price that's going to be paid. Procrastination causes for us problems. Proverbs 15, 19 says, look at a lazy fellow. Look at a lazy fellow has trouble all through life, but the good man's path is easy. When we keep putting things off, when we are indecisive, when we are fearful, when we are waiting for the perfect conditions, when we don't wanna do the hard work, the net result is life becomes hard. We find ourselves in circumstances and situations and it's easy to look at external causes or external people. Sometimes we gotta ask ourselves, how did I get here? Here's a simple example. How, how, how many of us have had home repairs that you know you need to do, but you put them off? Maybe, maybe you got to get your roof done. Maybe, maybe you got uh, uh, stop gutters. You got to replace something in the toilet, so whatever. And if you don't tackle those problems, What's going to happen to them? You're going to get worse. You're going to get worse. There's the old saying, you can pay me now or what? Pay me more later. Yep. And it's the same mindset when we procrastinate. For whatever the driving reason is, the cost of procrastination is it causes problems. Procrastination generally doesn't make things better. It makes things worse. The longer we wait to do the good that we know we ought to do, the longer we wait to make the most of the opportunity that's in front of us, 
from a spiritual perspective, even from a practical, natural perspective, the cost of it is more often than not, significantly more often than not, the circumstances and the scenarios become worse. Second cause of procrastination is we waste opportunities. We waste an opportunity. Remember, time is an opportunity. The encouragement in this series is to redeem the time, to make the most of every window of opportunity God presents to us. And when we procrastinate, the cost of it is we waste that opportunity. That divine window of opportunity, we, it, it's like closing the window on ourselves. Look at Proverbs 24. If you won't plow in the cold, you won't wheat, you, you won't eat at harvest. If you won't plow in the cold, you won't eat at harvest. What's the cost of procrastination? What's the cost of not plowing in the cold? The cost is you ain't gonna eat at harvest because you ain't gonna have no harvest to reap because you didn't do the work. We have to take advantage of the opportunities that God sends our way. Practical daily stuff of life, and more importantly, the things related to what God has called you and I to do and to be for him and to do in a building and establish, establishing his kingdom. Because oftentimes these opportunities, they're not gonna last long. That's why they're, that's why Kairos is a window of opportunity. You got, you got a moment to decide, to choose, to act. And we don't take advantage of that divine window of opportunity God gives us we're going to have to give an account for that. And I know stuff like that is not, it, it, it's, it's not popular in Christianity. Are you trying to threaten people? You No, no, it's just the truth. Here's a quote that I found. Um, John Whitner, he, he was an abolitionist in the, 18, in the 1850s. Here's, here's what he said. Of all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. How many times have we thought, oh man, if I had only taken advantage of that opportunity, if I had only acted when I first thought about, it, man, if I hadn't waited, man, if I hadn't done this, if I hadn't done that, and it's all around how we engage that time, how we engage that window. Man, if I had made a choice to do this in that season versus doing that in that season. Of all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. And the older you and I get, we get more of those might have beens. You see, there's opportunities all around us, all around us. Every day, there's a window of opportunity that God gives us. Let's not let our legacy, the story that will be told about our lives, let it not be written in words of what might have been but in deeds of accomplishment. Third cause of procrastination is it hurts people. People are negatively impacted by procrastination.
Procrastination keeps you and I from doing the things that really matter and count in life. Relationships break up because of procrastination. Because we put off doing the things that we know we ought to do to forgive. We know we ought to forgive. God has commanded us to forgive. He didn't suggest it. He commanded it to love. To overlook offenses. All of these things that we know God has told us. And if you think about relationships that you have, with people that are strained, that are um, burdensome, that aren't where you want them to be. And maybe we never thought about procrastination this way, but God has given us all kinds of instruction about how to build bridges and mend relationships from our, from our standpoint. The Bible says, as far as it lies within you, seek peace and pursue it. But many times we don't do those things. We know we ought to do them. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. And we won't do those things. We procrastinate. And the result is it ends up hurting others. Relationships are damaged as a result. All right, I'm about to get out of here. So we talked about the causes of procrastination, indecisiveness, perfectionism, fear, laziness, or an unwillingness to do the hard work that's required. Talked about the cost of procrastination, causes a lot of problems, it wastes opportunities, it impacts and hurts others. And now we're gonna talk about what's the cure? So how do we correct it? How, how do we break the cycle? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple of real practical steps and I'm gonna be out your hair. First thing we have to do if we're gonna have a cure for procrastination is this is the hardest part. This one right here, we have to stop making excuses. Proverbs 22, 13. Someone read that for me, for me, please. A lazy man is full of excuses. I can't go to work, he says. If I go outside, I might meet a lion in the streets and be killed. <laughs> I laughed. <him. laughs> the concept is pretty straightforward, right? Excuses. The person that doesn't want to do, and let's think about lazy or slowful or sluggard in the sense a person unwilling to do the hard work necessary. Always got an excuse. Always, you see what had happened was, right? And, and it always sounds somewhat reasonable and rational. And there's a lot of things that we tell ourselves to rationalize and to justify our procrastination in areas. And there's some areas in our lives where we're on it, man. We are killing it. We're, we are on it. We're diligent. We're successful. We're thorough. And then there's other areas of our lives where we're not. And particularly in the areas related to what God has called you and I to be and to do. So we have to stop making excuses. I found this list. I found this list. Um, I, I, I couldn't like fit it all on the slide to show you all the different quotes. But here, here, here's a list of excuses that people made, that people gave um, when they um, had a car accident. And this, this, this is what they told the police. Just, just, just a couple of them. I thought they were funny. But my wife says I don't really have a good sense of humor. So you might not find them as funny as I found it. But, but here, here, here's three examples of excuses people made. Uh, one was, uh, going. I was going home from work. I drove into the wrong house and collided with a tree that I don't have. I was going home from work. I drove into the wrong house and collided with a tree I don't have. Excuses. Another one is, I, I, 
I'd been driving my car for 40 years when I fell asleep at the wheel and had an accident. Okay, Rip Van Winkle. Third one is uh, the pedestrian had no idea which way to go, so I ran over him. Excuses, rationales. All of us, if we're going to deal with procrastination, we got to get rid of the excuses. Here's a quote from Ben Franklin. People who are good at making excuses are rarely good at anything else. What's your excuse? What do you use to tell yourself, to rationalize you, to make you comfortable with not doing the good that you know you ought to do? Whether that's in the practical element and things of life, and, and more importantly, I want us to be thinking about the calling that God has on each of our lives and the thing that God is calling us to do and to be. What excuses do we make for not spending time with God? What excuses do we make for not reading the Bible, for not praying, for not worshiping on the Lord, for not sharing our faith with people? What excuses do we make for continuing in activities that we know are displeasing to God, that we know God clearly tells us that's not his will for his children? Don't let excuses keep you from experiencing God's purpose and pursuits in 2023. So if we're going to get rid of procrastination. We have to stop making excuses. And then we have to do the one thing that's counterintuitive to procrastination, which is putting stuff off to tomorrow. We got to start now. We have to stop making excuses now, not 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 next month, not 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 next week or or, or or tomorrow. Whatever it is you're going to do, do it now. Nike says, "Just do it." Our theme should be, "Do it now." Not going to be indecisive, not going to be fearful, not going to wait for the perfect conditions. I'm going to do it now. Because now is the window of opportunity. I'm not going to be afraid of the hard work that's involved in doing it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it now. Proverbs 27 says, don't brag about tomorrow. You don't know what a day will bring. We don't have tomorrow. We talked about this when we started this series, man. We take tomorrow for granted. That's why we say, I'll do it tomorrow. Whatever God, the opportunity that God has put in front of us, it's a window. It's a kairos. It's a now. Make the most of every opportunity now. Don't do tomorrow what you can do today. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. What, I want you to think about this, God. What, what is God calling you to do? Now think about this question. What changes? does he want you to make in your life with his help and strength? We're at the start of a new year. The page is turned. We can be about the business of resetting, reorganizing, reprioritizing our whole world, our whole life. What is God saying he wants different in your life? 
How do I begin to engage in that process now? Every time you and I catch ourselves saying, I'll do it later, that, that, that should become like a warning light to us that says, man, I'm procrastinating. I need to do it now. I'll send this, I'll send this uh, deck out to you guys, but if, if, if you're sitting and you're thinking, here's, here's, here's three questions I want you to think about. If you got a paper and pen in front of you, write, write down one thing that will improve your relationship with God. What's the one thing that you can do that will improve your relationship with God. Because remember guys, there's a lot of things that we can do in 2023 and be successful at without God. Our careers, our finances, our health. There's a lot of goals that we can set and achieve. We can be successful at a lot of things without God. Unsaved people do it all the time. But the one thing you and I can't be successful at without God is our spiritual growth and development. We can't be successful at fulfilling our calling and our purpose without God. Amen. What's the one thing that you need to do to improve your relationship with God? Second question I want you to think about. What's, what's, what's the one thing that you need to do to improve your relationship with others? And then the third thing is, what, what's the one thing you need to do to be better at your job, to be more of a profitable servant in your job? Relationship with God, relationship with others, and in my job. What's, what's, what's the one thing I can do? I bet God has an answer. I bet God has a plan. I bet if you ask God, he'll tell you. And if you say, God, every day I want to prioritize into my life these things that I need to do to have a better relationship with you, a better relationship with others, and a better relationship on my job and start them and do them now. Before the day's out, before you go to bed tonight, make that list. Lift that list up, lift that list up to God and start now. Not tomorrow, not next week. If we're saying to ourselves, man, that's good. That's a good list, Pastor Dave. I'm going to jump on that tomorrow. Because oftentimes when we procrastinate, it's not that we don't have a value for something. It's that we <laughs> allowed ourselves to be deceived in thinking that it won't cost me anything if I do it tomorrow. And sometimes it doesn't. But more often than not, in the really key spiritual areas and really understanding what we're talking about in terms of redeeming the time, making the most of every opportunity, understanding that time is not ours, it's God. And he's given it to us as an opportunity to do his will. What is his will? in our lives. What does he want us to do with this gift of time that he's given us? And if I put those things off till tomorrow, I'm not making the most of the opportunities that he gives me today. So 
So the third cure for procrastination is I got to create a plan. You got to create a plan. For most of us creating a plan, that's easy. We do that all the time. I have to create a plan to cure my procrastination. Proverbs says a wise man thinks ahead. A fool doesn't and even brags about the fact that he doesn't. I'm just led by the spirit. I just make it up as I go along. I just. We often think of the Holy Spirit as this random thing that moves chaotically. But God says he's not the author of confusion. God has a plan for your life. And if I'm connected with God and I'm listening to God about what he wants out of my life, I'm going to have a plan. He ain't going to be making it up as he goes along. So I need a plan. We all heard this old adage, if we fail to plan, we're planning to fail. Right? Do you have a plan? Most of us have already started crafting a plan for the year. And as I said earlier, you know, it's around our jobs, our careers, our money, our finances, our health, all that other stuff. Do you have a plan for your spiritual growth and development in your relationship with God? Do you have a plan that's designed and focusing on fulfilling God's will for your life? Or is it a plan that's structured about how God can help you fulfill your will for your life? Then the last thing in having a cure for procrastination, you got to stop making results. I mean, stop making excuses. We have to have the attitude about starting now. Just do it. We got to create a plan. The plan that cures our procrastination. The plan that identifies the areas that I need to work on, that I need to strengthen. And then lastly, I have to find an accountability partner. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 10 says this, two are better than one. Why? Why is two better than one? Because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. I need an accountability partner. I need to find somebody that says, man, listen, we want to redeem the time in 2023. And let's agree to mutually hold each other accountable for our stewardship of time. Let's agree to hold ourselves accountable for creating and following a plan to cure our procrastination to stop not doing the things that we know God has called us to do them in the time that he's called us to do. Create a plan. Ask them to hold you accountable. Many falsely believe that um, their relationship with God and their spiritual stuff, that's their business and don't be all up in my business, you know, um, but we need accountability. We, we, need, we need one another. We need somebody that can help us when we fall, who can encourage us, pick us up, pray with us. So here's our recap, and I'm out your hair. Here's our recap. We said the cause of the procrastination is indecisiveness primarily driven by being double-minded because we don't have God's clarity about things. Waiting for, waiting for the perfect opportunity for the perfect conditions. Fear of man, failure, rejection. And then laziness, not wanting to do the hard work that's involved. When we allow these scenarios, these causes of procrastination, and there's many more than, than what's on that list, but what's the cost of when these things can drive, our, drive, drive how we engage with time? Causes more problems because they don't go away, they only get worse. We end up wasting opportunities 
And then other people are negatively impacted by what we choose to do or not to do. And then as we just stated, the cure for all of this is first it begins with stop making excuses. Take ownership for how we invest and spend our time. Start now, just do it. Stop putting stuff off till tomorrow that God has called us to do and to deal with today. Create a plan, have a strategy for how you're gonna develop and improve your relationship with God, improve your relationship with, with, with other people and improve your relationship on your job. Have a plan and then find somebody that's willing to walk in accountability with you. <clears throat> Is procrastination a sin? Is not doing now the thing that I know I ought to do? Is putting something off till tomorrow the thing that needs to be done today? Is it a sin? James says, anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, he sins. My prayer, my encouragement, and this is something different than the way I usually teach, um, but your focus on the areas that rob us of the opportunities that God is presenting to us. There's a cure for procrastination and that cure lies within your hands. <clears throat>